you guys. So I wanted to do something different with the alcohol ink and the last couple ones I've done have been blue and kind of like an aqua blue. So this time I wanted to do green. So I started off with putting clear resin in the bottom so that when I drop the ink into the mold it will spread out throughout the molds. Now something that I read and whether or not this is correct, I don't know, but it worked for me, is for every drop of color you put, um, you're supposed to put a white drop over it. Now again, whether that's true or not, I don't know. It's something I read and something I've been doing and I really like the results. So that's just how I've been doing them. I started off with a lighter green and then did the white on top and am now just putting in a darker green just in the corners. I tried to make sure that I don't necessarily put it on top of where I put the light green just because I want it to kind of marbleize. I didn't fill the molds all the way. Um, I wanted to be able to put a little extra resin on top just to kind of help blend everything together. So that's what you see here is I'm just adding a little bit of clear to not only fill the rest of the mold, but to just help those colors kind of mesh together, if that makes sense. It also kind of helps with making a marble effect. Still dropping. In the past, I've overfilled these molds and it's turned out to be just kind of a disaster a little bit. Um, they tend to bow out and, you know, that's where the side that I put the, um, the ear studs in. So with the coral mold, it's a little more challenging to try to make sure that the ink spreads evenly like it does with the hexagon molds. So I put the lime green in two different spots just to help that ink um, spread. Now the thing about these alcohol inks is they're very concentrated. So a little ink goes a long way, I have learned. And uh, you really don't need much. So I try to really only do, you know, one drop of each color into the little molds. Now, if you're using something bigger, like a coaster mold or um, like a cheese board mold, those are bigger so that those would require more inks. Whereas since I'm using smaller molds, the less ink is actually a little better. Again, going back in and just dropping some more of that clear resin on top um, just to help kind of mix things around, fill out that mold a bit. Sometimes, um, you know, I have not put enough um, resin in and the molds turn out fine, um, but you know, some of the resin goes up on the sides and when it, you know, cures and hardens, then you have, um, it's just not even and it's kind of rough and kind of concaved a bit. So then I have to go back in and just top it with some clear resin and let that cure on top of the time it took for it to cure the first time. So the, the more you can put in your mold the first time, the better. Um, and if you go over on the sides, it's not the end of the world. What I found is once these cure is I just go in with my X-Acto knife and I just trim around it. If it's a bigger piece, then I'll use little scissors that I have, but my X-Acto knife does the best job for me. And that's just me personally. These molds I absolutely love. Um, the ones that you see here are actually new molds that I got today. Uh, the, the triangle ones and then the monument looking ones. Those just arrived today and I was so excited because guys with, uh, with time and usage of these molds, um, they tend to kind of break down a bit. 
at least um, in my experience. And I'll have to do a video on what the molds look like once they've broken down a bit. But it just trying to get the, the, the resin out of the molds when they, they're really used. It's a little bit challenging and you really got to pop those suckers out. And it's, you know, the bottom of the molds lose its shine and so it kind of turns into a matte color. And I had to start putting clear resin on top of the matte to give it that shine again. And it's just, I, it was time for new molds and so... I got some more and I'm super excited about it truthfully. I really want to get more. I got these molds from an Etsy shop called Summerland uh, Summerland molds. Summerland petite molds. I'll have to link them below. Um, but I absolutely love Erica and her molds. Um, they're just so pretty. So going back in, I just did all the drops of the light and the white. Now I'm doing the darker green on top. I'm not really sure how these circle ones are going to turn out. Um, just because after I put the dark green on top, it looked a bit heavy. So after these cure and I take them out of the molds, I'll flip them over to see what it looks like. And hopefully they turn out really cool. You just never know. I mean, that's how it was when I made some blue ones. Is it they they turned out in the end, but you know, the res the ink doesn't totally sink all the way through. So the very top of the piece itself is very saturated with ink. So oh, big tip: once you put your ink into these molds, do not. And I repeat, do not use a torch whatsoever. I made the mistake in using a torch over these inks. And if you look at the coral one, you'll see one of the sections looks a little bit burnt. And then there's kind of like a round um, stain of ink on there. That's because that middle coral one... <laughs> caught on fire. It was the first time I was using the mold. It had just arrived and it I had just gotten the inks in and I was super excited to try them out. I did you know it said that the inks were flammable. I didn't really understand what that meant. I do now. The mold caught fire or not the mold but the ink caught fire and it burned um, and I had to throw away the entire the entire pour I did. It was so disheartening. And the only way that I could think of to put the fire out, because it was a big flame, um, was to take a glass cup, wine glass, and put it on top. So that wine glass is officially ruined. <laughs> but just a tip for you guys is do not use a torch after you have put the indie or the alcohol ink in. What I did is after I put the clear resin in the molds was I took my torch and I torched it to get all the bubbles out and then I put the ink in. So that's something you didn't see. Um, but just a tip is, yeah, do that before you put those inks in. Guys, these are super, super flammable. <laughs> and I don't know if all inks are flammable. This is the first time I've used inks and yeah, they catch fire like, like no other. <laughs> so, just putting in the drops of white. We're gonna go, I'm gonna go in and put the drops of the dark green in. And what I didn't get in this video um, is I actually still had some extra resin. So I grabbed one of the older molds that I had of the Monument Style and I made two more. Um, I did not do the exact same thing with the inks and I really wish I would have because they did not turn out as well in my opinion as the ones that you see here in this video. So once these cure, I'm going to let these sit overnight and I'll probably take them out of their mold tomorrow morning. And they, I've noticed that when I use the ink, it takes a bit longer to cure. 
So if you're trying these for the first time and you take your piece out and you're like, oh wow, this is still super bendy, this is soft, do I need to throw it away? Um, you might, but just hold on to it for, you know, two days, two extra days, and see how they turn out because honestly, um, after I take them out of the mold, they're still super bendy and they kind of feel like rubber. If I let them sit for two or three days, um, then they, they harden about 98%. They're not super, you know, they're not like 100% hard. So that's still something I'm working through and still learning about, but I have learned that they do harden for the most part. So if anybody has any advice for me, because I'm always, always open for advice on how to, you know, do better with using epoxy resin, um, let me know because I, I, would, I would love to hear what you have to say. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video and maybe this will help you. Thank you.